Coming up next, Frank and Mary here in Framingham with your co-hosts, Grace O'Donnell and me, Art Bergeron. Our guest today, Amy Cowan, Program Director of SMOC's Home Modification Loan Program. A great program. Stay tuned. Hi, welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services. And I'm Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney. My day job is at Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us at Myrick, biggest firm outside of Boston. Uh, and my office is actually in, in uh, Westboro. And I do nothing but elder law. But this show has nothing to do with elder law. It has everything to do with Frank and Mary. If you've seen presentations that I do, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life they're sitting in that park bench, by the way. Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's you and you want to stay here in Framingham, the question is, who are the people you need to know? And what are the programs you need to know about in order to do exactly that? My great co-host, Grace O'Donnell, who is the, whose day job is as the senior center director, but she manages to find time to do this, always finds these great guests to do exactly that and help you understand the people you need to know. Grace, whom do we have today? Hi, Arthur. Our guest today is Amy Cowan, SMOC's pro program manager for the Home Modification Program. It exists to assist people who are seniors and those with disabilities to provide modifications to their homes so that the home is more accessible. I'm really excited that you got th these folks. This is a big deal. This is one of the great, like, hidden pearls that most seniors are not aware of. So this is great. So, Amy, tell us about the program. How do people qualify for it and what is actually involved with it? Well, I want to thank you for the opportunity for presenting our program. Um, I have some slides I'd like to share so we can follow along. The Home Modification Loan Program uh, is a program that is uh, affiliated with the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission in collaboration with the nonprofit, com the Community Economic Development Assistance Corporation, better known as CDAC. I work for the nonprofit South Middlesex Opportunity Council one of many nonprofits in the state that uh, runs the home modification program. Our mission, HMLP mission, is to enable people to continue to live in their home and be as independent as possible, making sure that they are safe and functioning on a daily basis. The home modification loan program um, is a state funded lending program that provides 0%. Most of our applicants are eligible for the 0%, which means that there's no interest accruing on a monthly basis. 3% interest for those that might be a landlord. It's up to a $50,000 loan for land and dwelling properties and 30,000 for mobile home units. The guidelines for the eligibility um, for HMLP is a household gross income must be at or below 200% of the median income, which is very, very generous. So for Frank and Mary, household size of two, as long as they earn less than 214800 per year, then they would be eligible for the program based on their income. The other uh, few things that, that require um, eligibility checkpoints would be that your property taxes are paid up to date and that you don't owe the state any taxes, any state taxes. Here's a few of the uh, application 
also the application requirements, items required as part of our application, uh, certification that pro the proposed modification relates to the beneficiaries, beneficiaries ability to function on a day-to-day -day basis. So there is a documentation of need from a medical professional, or it could be filled out by a visiting nurse, a social worker, mm -hmm. anybody that knows that beneficiary's day-to-day -day needs. Uh, there's the verification of the household size and gross income, the verification of paid state income taxes and property taxes, and then the copy of a property deed or the manufactured mobile home bill of sale. One other thing that the application has added is that applicants must have less than $75,000 in liquid type assets. This does not include the value of your property or any 401k or pension plans. I just wanna make sure that the, uh, the program is used to, for those in the community that are, are, are eligible. With um, the home modification program, we really try to allow the borrower to choose their own contractor. We like them to feel as though they're in charge of their projects. So we allow them to choose their own contractor or vendor to modify their home. We do have a list that we can certainly provide of contractors or vendors that we've used uh, in the past or borrowers have been pleased with their work. They just need to be properly licensed and insured. Uh, they must submit a contractor bid form with details of the scope of work to be done to the property. And uh, also the homeowner's chosen contract will need to complete this bid form and also proper invoicing forms. Here are some of the towns within the Metro West region that we service. And SMOC also covers uh, Cape and Islands as well. So now I'm gonna get into some before and after photos, which I think is certainly help, helpful for those that are applying to have a nice visual of possibilities of modifications that might be needed. Um, here are some of the most uh, popular and standard that the program does support. We have um, ramps, exterior ramps or interior ramps within the home. We have exterior lifts. We have a uh, bathroom and kitchen adaptation. We do have fencing, sometimes those that might have um, dementia or they might have a animals um, a support animal. Um, we have sensory spaces. We do also we do also support families who have uh, children who have been diagnosed with autism or other learning disabilities. So in addition to the elderly, we also, do support um, those younger individuals as well. We have, um, we've been doing some accessory uh, dwelling units, little tiny homes or an extension of a bedroom bathroom addition for um, multi-generational living. We have widening of doorways, for wheelchairs and, and walkers, uh, hard floor surfaces. Uh, we can remove any thresholds that might be a tripping hazard and also hardwire alarm systems. Here's an example of a nice exterior ramp. We also have companies that might use a less expensive but durable metal ramping. To the right is an example of a lift, a wheelchair lift. We do walkways and driveways to make sure that it's a smooth surface into the home, ease of egress into the home. Here's some examples of some different stair lifts. 
So no matter what type of stairs there may be, if there's a landing, all sorts of possibilities. And we, we've worked with some of the companies that you've seen, Stana, Acorn, some other individual private companies. Here's an example of what used to be stairs and difficulty to an exterior wheelchair lift. The program will also support up to 64,000, I'm sorry, 64 square feet, 64 square feet for a platform surface to be able to maneuver into the, the home, into the doorway. So we don't replace decks, but 64 square feet is a pretty good size if you're going to be attaching it to a ramp. Here's an example of fencing that we've done for some of our younger beneficiaries. Before and after, just making sure that those are aware of their boundaries of their property line and setbacks. That's always important. Sensory spaces for those that might need physical therapy on an ongoing basis or occupational therapy. Here's a good example of a widening of doorways. Sometimes walls are removed just for an open floor plan for homes as well. Whatever is necessary, everybody's needs are different and individualized and the program's really great at acknowledging that. Here's a removal of a threshold. Pulling up old carpet that could be of a tripping hazard, putting down hard, hard floor surfaces, whether it be wood, whether it be a nice laminate product, whatever is within the budget. We want to be able to see our borrowers utilize the, the 50,000 if need be to get as many projects and modifications they may need. Here's a, an example of bathroom modifications uh, right into a, a barrier free roll in shower, being able to on the right pull a wheel, wheelchair right under the vanity. An example of a low threshold walk-in shower from a tub to a shower conversion, very popular modification and putting in a handheld shower. There's a lot of great materials out there that have grab bars built in that are less expensive than doing tiling. A lot of comfort height toilets and grab bars nearby railings, handrails throughout the home. Here's an example again of a roll-in shower. A couple of different examples. And it's really the, the it's really to the the borrower's taste and, and what they like for colors. The program's great about really redoing the whole bathroom if if need be. And if that is a desire, and this certainly adds more value to the property as well. Here's a tub to shower conversion, another example. Some of the products have built-in seats or, so you can, you can have as simple of a modification to as fancy as a modification, depending on, on budget. An example of a walk-in tub. Some uh, beneficiaries of need are in need of that type of therapy. We do kitchen modifications for those that may be in a wheelchair, uh, but they still want to be able to cook and participate in the kitchen. So lowering of appliances. 
a lot of great drawer features or pull down cabinet shelving. And depending, again, kitchens can be expensive, but if there is budget available, um, we would also cover appliances. Here's an example of before and after from kitchen to an accessible kitchen where a wheelchair can roll right under to the sink, to the stovetop, everything at a, a handy height. And our, our goal on a, on a yearly basis for the Metro West region, we try to close uh, in anywhere from 22 to 25 loans and on the Cape 15 to, to 18. So we did okay. Um, in 2020, we certainly had some challenges with COVID, but being able to get the word out there like we're doing now is certainly helpful. And Certainly send us a, an email or give us a call, 508-326-5349. We'll send out a complete application packet. And sometimes once, once we have those that have closed on a home modification loan, especially nowadays where so many people are refinancing, we've done a lot of subordination requests um, some people are selling their home. The beauty of this program is there's no interest on a, on a monthly basis or annual basis, and it's a 50-year note. It sits as a junior mortgage lien to the property and is paid off when the home is sold down the road or if there is a transfer in title. So certainly, um, if you have any questions, be glad to, to answer those at this yes, time. Yes. Hi, Amy. Thank you. That was great information to share. And I do hope that people will uh, pay attention to that and uh, respond and apply, because it certainly can be quite helpful for people, especially for those who want to stay in their homes a as long as possible, as Arthur talks about with every program here. Um, I'm sure people would be curious to know how long is the process from when they apply for this loan to when uh, it would be um, approved? Sure. Um, the application process is fairly simple and straightforward. That can be done within a, a few weeks of receiving the application. In a good scenario, usually six to eight weeks. Sometimes the process does get hung up a little bit in regards to interviewing contractors and making sure that that bid form from the contractor or the vendor is complete for us to be able to send that information with the documentation of need from the medical professional to get the project approved and then moved forward to a first inspection. Um, we have a first inspection and then a final inspection. We allow the contractors to do their job as, um, as contractors to pull the proper permitting with the town or the city. And then we allow that process to take place with the homeowner overseeing the, the modifications being done. So could I ask, do you assist the homeowner with reading the contract? So if a contractor draws up their plans, do you, if, if the person has questions about, gee, I'm not sure what the contractor means by this, do you help the person understand the, those aspects or do you keep that strictly between the homeowner and the contractor? We are certainly available to help with any part of the process from application to um, reviewing of the bid form. When there is a first inspection, that 
bid form is then sent to a construction monitor, which is another um, like there, they have knowledge in the construction field. So they're also there to help answer and interpret any particular questions, which is also why we do a first inspection because sometimes questions do come up and we wanna make sure that there's a clear understanding between the borrower and the contractor before any work begins and before any funding is actually approved and secured. Very good. Very good. And we fund every other Tuesday. We're always working towards the next funding date. So it's not as though borrowers need to wait per quarter to be able to get funding. We're always working towards that next that next date. Well, so, well, well. That sounds like a pretty straightforward process. We try. We try. We've, we've certainly uh, made some revisions over the years, but we, we do try to always think of the borrower making sure that they're well protected, that they are knowledgeable, that they're certainly, um, there's nobody's taking advantage of them. So in regards to uh, disbursement payments, we would, it's normally uh, whoever is the property owner plus the contractor, we never pay contractors directly. All checks are filtered through the homeowner. Okay. So we are meeting milestones and making sure that all of that is, is understood and mapped out. So there's no surprises. Arthur, it looks like you might have a question. Yeah, I had, I had some there. It, it is a wonderful, it's just a wonderful program, you know, and, and, it, and, it, and there's enough money involved that you can do some big things. You can do a kitchen, you can right. do a bathroom, you know, these really kind of major improvements. So I had, I, I had a few. In many of the examples that you were giving, it was sounding like the program or seeming like the program was really tailored to, for, to folks who really needed otherwise to be in a wheelchair. So I guess, could, could you talk a little bit to what, you know, at what, what, what kind of level of, of disability, of problem, right, could cause the, the person to be eligible for the, for the program. So, and I'm always thinking about stairs, you know, so I've got, a, right. I got a lot of people who, you know, they're not in a wheelchair, but boy, getting to those, the next floor is a real challenge, you know? So, and so exactly. I'm, I'm just trying to get, getting, trying to get a sense of that on that medical side. And then I had a couple of questions on the money side. So um, again, everything is based on the documentation of need from the medical professional there, there are certainly with elderly folks, gait issues. So we always take that into consideration. Therefore, um, a tub to a shower conversion is popular. Um, handrails, grab bars. Um, we have to just be careful because there is a fine line between renovation and mod need for modification. So therefore, it's very specific to what is going to change uh, in, in regards to the modifications that will help these folks function safely on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. And, that, so, and, and that's um, really in the opinion of the medical professional who is, who is the person who is really an important piece of this process. process. So you really want to be. That's correct. Right. So, so go ahead. Uh, sometimes uh, projects may not use the full 50,000 and we certainly ask folks to think about what are your needs today? What do you think your needs might be five, 10 years down the road? Sometimes loans are fully dispersed and then they may reopen again down the road. So at this point, we are able to reopen loans and do an increase to their original loan. If down the road, there might be a new modification that might be necessary. That's great. I never, I never knew about that part. So it yeah. was sounding like also you, you folks are okay with b being behind a first mortgage. So you, you're okay yes. with being in second mortgage position. With, does that apply to reverse mortgages also? Reverse mortgages, we do ask for documentation on the mortgage to make sure that there's nothing in that reverse mortgage language that would hinder uh this home modification loan going in behind a reverse mortgage 
most of the time with a reverse mortgage and appraisal has already been done with the property. So therefore, as long as there's no walls being changed, um, again, if there's any addition to the dwelling, they would have to get approval from that reverse mortgage company to make sure that it is going to be, um, you know, an addition that will bring equity to, to that property because right. we certainly wouldn't want to take away equity in a reverse mortgage. Right. I, I, think I asked that question because that's really a, that, that's an ideal because it's, it's, it's a substantial amount of money. It's also an ideal way for folks who really want to stay home to be you know, kind of adding to the value of their reverse mortgage because it gives right. them this added because, because some of their, you know, they can be putting some of their money, that they're pulling out of the reverse mortgage together with your money. And that's especially the case, classic Frank and Mary case where you don't have, like in your case, less than $75,000. So you don't have a lot of cash to be throwing in. Mm -hmm. So this gives you the ability to just what Frank and Mary want. They really want to stay home. They really want that's to right. stay home. That's right. Okay. Grace, I know you had your question. No, I, I was just going to say, was there any other point that you wanted to make sure to share with the public as we're getting close on the to the end of the show here, Amy? Was there anything we didn't cover? You're just too um, interesting. You were so interesting. <laughs> you have a million things. Go, go ahead. I, I just hope that, um, that we're able to reach the community. Feel free to give us a call. Feel free to ask, give us a call and ask questions about potential modification needs and what would be covered. We'll certainly go through that with you and reach out to the project manager at CDAC if we don't know the answer to. So feel free to, to get an application. There's within the application, a lot of frequently asked questions and answers that I think are certainly helpful in addition to this presentation. Great. Well, Grace, this is a wonderful guest. Right. Yeah, this is exactly yeah. what this show is for, Amy. This is what oh. the show is for to get people aware of people just like you and the program you're doing that most people had no idea. This was just great. So, well, folks, you. you've got to think about this is a big deal for Frank. You're Frank and Mary. You want to stay at home. This is a fifty thousand dollars is a big deal. No interest. Unbelievably high income thresholds. I've got practically no clients that make this kind of money. Right. <laughs> right. For seniors. Um, you got to talk to this lady, right? So thank you very much, Grace. Thank you so much, as usual, for finding another wonderful guest. And we'll see you in the, on the, soon in the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Amy. Thank you.